Hey guys, how you doing? Steve Lab here. Um, just another little vlog. Um, talk about a couple of things. I get this question a lot asked for me. Now, you, all you guys that watch my channel, you know I work on a lot of oil burners. And uh, I've been doing working on oil burners for, you know, since I started my own business, which has been 20 years. I've been on my own for 20 years. I've been on my own. So, um, a lot of the stuff that I do, you know, I learned on my own, my own techniques and what works for me. Now, what works for other guys, I'm not sure because I'm not working with them guys. Now, I went to oil burner school when I was young, when I, when I, you know, night school to learn the basics. We just learn the basics in school. You know, the rest of the stuff you learn out in the field and as you go along, you pick up tricks and what well, works for you. The reason why I'm doing this video is I get a lot of questions about, um, you know, guys will see me change a filter that's nasty at the tank. And then they'll say, well, well why didn't you change the, the filter inside the pump? If that was me, I would have changed that filter in the pump. Well, for sure, it has to be done. You cannot get by without it. Well, let me tell you why. Hey, sometimes I change them and sometimes I don't. I change the filter at the at the tank, and if it's dirty, it's dirty. And then what I'll do is, um, you know, I'll run the, run the burner and I'll, I'll run the flow to the pump. I'll bleed it to the pump. It's a one pipe. Most of the time, it's a one pipe in a residential house. And I can tell by that oil flow that's coming out that pump if that oil line is blocked or if that filter is dirty just by the flow that comes out of that pump so uh, it's just an experience that I, that I I can tell you know if it's got a wimpy flow coming out of that pump yeah I gotta clean the filter or change the filter most of the time I'll just take them out and clean them and put them right back in or I might have to blow the oil line out but I can tell by looking if it's dirty or not so why should I go to the trouble of changing that filter in that pump if I don't have to you know that's that's a rookie question so I just figured I wanted to do this video just to a lot of these guys I get this comment all the time you know oh my god you have to change that filter in that pump it's mandatory no it's not if it's not dirty you don't change it why would you do something that doesn't need to be done that's my motto that's just that on that particular thing you know and uh, Transformer the same way, you know, I can tell by the transformer, by testing the transformer, if it's weak, if it's wimpy, uh, you know, if it's wimpy, I'll change it. If not, I'll leave it alone, you know, and I don't like the electronic transformers. I've done videos on that too, them electronic transformers, sometimes will work, sometimes they won't. If they start acting up, I rip them out and put an old style transformer in there. Now, an old style transformer, usually they work or they don't work, but sometimes they get wimpy. Uh, you know, if you can't pull three quarters to inch and a half on that screwdriver, that thing's junk. If you only can pull a half an inch or five eighths of an inch on the screwdriver, the transformer's no good. Throw it out and put a new one in there. Um, they do get wimpy sometimes. Not always, but sometimes, you know, just because they're, uh, everything breaks. Everything that's installed eventually is going to break down. Some things last longer than others. I get this question a lot. How long is my, how long will, will my air conditioner compressor run? Who knows? I know some are out there 40, 50 years, and they're still running strong. You know, uh, air conditioning compressors, they're still running. Uh, you know, 50 years old. It all depends. It all depends on how it was installed. Uh, there's a lot of things that come into play. I know the new units aren't going to last as long as the old units because they're designing them, they're designing them like that to fail. Uh, it's too bad, but they're not making things to last anymore. Uh, it's very crazy the way that the way they're building stuff I put in water heaters all the time and they're good for 12 13 years And that's another thing guys that are asking me. Whoa, how come you don't change the anode rod inside the water heaters? Um, they do make anode rods that you can change in some of the water heaters some of them are straight and some of them I got like hot dogs in them where you could change them and uh, it will probably prolong the life of the water heat a little bit if you change your anode rod, but they're not cheap them anode rods and sometimes, you know, where, where the water heat is installed, you can't even get the old anode rod out. Depends on, you know, where it is, uh, there's duct work in the way, and uh, there's a lot of things that come into effect. A lot of people won't call me until after the water heater is leaking, and, the, and the, then they're calling me, oh, can you come over and change it? It's like changing the anode rod is not even brought into the, into the equation. They want you to do it for 40 bucks. It ain't going to happen, you know. By the time you change the anode rod, you could probably almost, you know, buy a tank, a couple of, 
a couple of times you could buy a brand new tank and it might not be worth changing the anode rod. I get a lot of these questions a lot of times and a lot of these, you know, most of them are good questions and I ain't got no problem answering them, but you guys got to realize that, you know, you see me do something on a video, there might be a reason for it or I'm not going that extra step for a reason, you know, just bear with me and, and try to understand, you know. Um, not everything's cut and dry and everything's, you know, if you if you guys were so so smart and so perfect with everything, you guys should do videos and show us how it's done. You know, I'm not talking to everybody. I'm talking to a couple of guys that, you know, they, they come through and they're, they're flipping know-it-alls, you know. Oh, I want to put, I want to do this, I want to do that. You guys should do, you, know, you guys should do videos. I really, I, I want to see, see how you guys do stuff. You know, it's easy to be a, you know, a backseat quarterback and stuff, and uh, it's not always the right thing to do, you know. But that, I just wanted to mention that about the oil pump. I get that question a lot. Oh, my God, you have to change the filter. No, you don't. If it's not dirty, you don't change it. Period. You know, why do something that you know to be done? And same thing with opening up the boiler. If the boiler's running clean and lean and look inside and it's not dirty, I ain't going to take it apart and brush it, brush it all down and clean it. As long as it's running clean, I leave it alone. Um, I get another question a lot with power venters. Um, you know, power venters are very important. You have to check the draft over the fire on the boiler with a power venter because a power venter is, is a mechanical draft. And there's a damper in there that can be adjusted at the power venter. And there's also a damper that you can adjust, you know, on top of the breech of the boiler. Um, and if that's not set up right, you could be getting a lot of draft and pulling your heat right up to that boiler or that furnace with a power vent. That's very important. Very important. But anyway, I just wanted to do touch on a couple of things. Um, you know, and I always say there's no such thing as a dumb question. If someone's got a question, you ask and, you know, and I'll try to answer it in the best of my ability. Um, if I don't know, if I don't know it, I'll try to find out someone who does know the answer, you know. And I think we all bring different things to the table. I think we all bring, you know, different aspects of the trade to the table. Um, some guys are better at zoning. Some guys are better at, you know, hydronic heating. Some guys are better at heat pumps. Um, some guys are better at commercial application. That's all I work on is commercial stuff. You know, the first 12 years of my, uh, you know, uh, Career were, were all commercial, light commercial, uh, schools, hospitals, and stuff like that. You know, and then I went into the residential realm. I like residential myself. I like, that's where I like to fly, and uh, you guys all know that. So, that's it. You know, um, just wanted to do a couple of things. I am going to try to do some more funny videos, ramp up some funny videos. I get a lot of requests for those. Uh, you know, I will try to do more funny videos very shortly. Um, I do enjoy them. I do enjoy the funny videos. You know, some people have gotten upset about me doing funny videos. and uh, I'll try not to, you know, say anything that they could say that it's, oh, oh my God, I'm talking, he's talking about me. I'll try to, you know, watch him, watch over him and make sure that I don't say certain, certain things. Because I know that some people get upset about certain things. And uh, I don't want to, um, you know... I don't want anybody to say that I'm making fun of them or anything like that. And that's the last thing I want to do is try to make fun of anybody and uh, hurt anybody's feelings. That's the last thing I want to do. So I'll have to be careful with the funny videos on, on what I say and how I say things. And that's why I haven't been doing them lately. Because um, some people really got ups very upset about them. And, uh, you know. A lot of the stuff I even said in those videos uh, wasn't talking about that particular person, but they took it as I was talking about them. So I want to be careful with that. I don't want to. Um, I don't want anybody to get offended uh, just on, on a joking around video, you know. So, like I said, I'm going to do more more joking around videos, kidding around videos, but I'll I'll, I'll, want, I'll go over them with a fine tooth comb and. And, you know, anything that I could th see this particular person is going to get upset about, I, I won't, I won't, you know, say that, say that in that, that area. I have to stay, I, certain areas I got to stay away from. And, uh, but I am going to do more, more funny videos for sure because I enjoy, I enjoy them and a lot of my subs enjoy them. So, I will do more. 
Yeah, guys, you know, if you got anything you want me to do a video about, you know, leave it in the comments down below. Uh, I do get quite a few requests of doing different type of videos, and a lot of them I got in the works, and I'm going to be doing them. And, but it's always good to get ideas on what you guys want, you know, to me to talk about and uh, go over different things and talk about different things. And it's, it's good to get, you know, feedback from my subscribers on what they're looking, uh, you know, what they're looking for. And uh, I had quite a few requests about, you know, uh, do a video about, you know, what you need to do to go into business. Uh, what you need to do to go into business, it depends on what business you want to go in. You know, if you want to go into a plumbing and heating business or uh, strictly HVAC, not plumbing related, uh, you know, just duck work. There's all kinds of different realms, the, the businesses you can go in. I recommend that, you, you know, if you want to become a plumber, get a job working as an apprentice plumber and learn the trade. You know, you can't start a business unless you learn the trade. That's pretty much, you know, the number one thing is you, you need to get some kind of experience behind you. I know guys that have started businesses and they don't have any experience. Uh... It's not the best thing you want to do is you want to get experience first. And then once you're experienced in the trade and you got, you know, 10 years under your belt, then start a business. You know, don't start a business and then try to learn the trade as you go. That's not the way to do it. You're better off doing it the other way. But, you know, that's just my opinion. I think that um, the more experience you can get, the better off you are. And no matter what you want to do. If you want to be a plumber, if you want to be a heating guy, hydronic heating guy, or, uh, you know, duck man, or sheet metal man, HVAC guy. A lot of the guys down south are just strictly HVAC, you know. They just work on hot air stuff. They don't work on hydronics. I'm not saying hydronics is anything that's, you know, a big deal or nothing. It's just a different type of heat. Uh, you know, I like hydronic heating. I like, I like hot air also. I do both. You know, it depends on what state you're in and what your laws are, and a lot of that's going to determine on what you do. But get get you know in with a company that you can learn with. That's that's the the key number one. Is start and start learning and start working and working with your hands. That's the thing. You got to work with your hands out in the field. You need to be working with your hands. Um, number one thing, experience, hands-on experience. That's it. Hands-on experience is what you want to do, you know. You can read PDFs to your blue in the face. You might be good at reading PDFs, but can you do it with your hands? Can you get out there and work with your hands? Uh, that's what you need to do, you know. Nothing wrong with PDFs. PDFs are a great learning thing. Um, you know, a lot of companies put them out. They're great, great to read the PDFs. You know, but you're just going to read PDFs. You're not going to get out there and work with your hands. You know, get it, get, get it, get in there and get it done with, you know, get in there and work with your hands. That's, that's my opinion. Uh, hands-on training is the best. You know, knowledge is good, but hands-on training is better. You need both. You need both. But anyway, so anyway, I've been rambling on here. It's hopefully a little too long of a video, but like I said, leave comments down below what you guys want me to talk about and. Um, I could, you know, plan on doing a lot more videos, so I'm just getting started, and, uh, you know, whatever you guys want me to talk about, you know, my videos are going to, usually a lot of them are out working in the field type of videos, and I'm going to continue to do that, but I like to do the vlogs, I like to maybe ramp up some funny stuff so we, you know, guys can get a laugh, and it's always good. Laughter's like a medicine, man. We all got to joke around. I, I'm kind of a joker. I like to joke around and kid around and, and get a couple of laughs from people. I enjoy that, you know. I just have to be careful that nobody gets offended by it because that's not my intent. I don't want anybody to get offended. It never has been my intent, you know. It never has been. But anyway, guys, have a good day and uh, more videos to come.